How are we doing everyone? Welcome to the very first video on my YouTube channel. And um, for anyone who doesn't know already, uh, my name's Jordan or Brinkman FX and uh, I was a former founder of Quantum Trading. Um, we closed some months ago now, um, you know, but we were going for just under a year and now what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be sort of expressing and making videos, especially technical videos, and I want to be posting them to my YouTube channel. And um, the reason for this is because as anybody who's ever learned from me before knows I have a real passion for teaching. I love teaching, I love explaining, and I genuinely love helping people. The only reason why sort of quantum uh, closed and I decided to close on it is because multiple things happened within my life personally. Um, personal situations and circumstances with family and sort of me and myself where I just couldn't continue to keep it open and it's not fair to continue to charge and leave something open that I can't give my 100% self to because like I said before I'm really passionate um, in what I do and what I deliver and the content that I can deliver and if I'm not meeting that then obviously that's going to um, have an impact and I'm not going to keep something running and also being like a sole mentor educator and owning your own community and platform um, especially with a full-on mentorship with like weekly calls weekly videos I was pumping out videos multiple videos every single week you know it was a lot to do on my own and eventually it almost got to burnout. Um, I was near the verge of burnout with what was going on. Um, but like I said, now having a YouTube channel and posting on here, it's going to sort of be my platform to sort of just create content, create education um, and just post on here. Like I said, if anyone does want to learn and sort of exactly how I trade, you know, the course is still available. I'll pop it in the description for, uh, for anyone who does want to um, sort of learn everything. Uh, like I said, it's not full weekly uh, videos and stuff like it used to be where we used to sort of post the weekly content videos and we used to have the weekly Zooms. But every single video from when we launched is there. There's hundreds of hours worth of content there and resources available if you guys do want to have a look at it. But what we're going to be doing today is we're just going to be doing a weekly market breakdown, which is something that I'd normally do every, well, is what I used to do uh, every single week when I had Quantum. And, you know, it's just something that I want to start posting. If any of you guys have any sort of video requests that you want to see, I'm more than happy to do technical videos. And um, because like I said, I'm a technical person. Um, I'm not so much this mindset person who can give you all this great life advice. Um, like there's much better people qualified than that than me. I'm just sort of good at what I do, which is the, the technical stuff. So I'm more than happy to post this. I've got trade recaps, market breakdowns, and anything else. I've got some things lined up. But if you guys have got any sort of requests that you guys have, do pop it down below and I will sort of get to them. And whatever you guys suggest is what I'm going to post, right? So if anyone who doesn't know as well, I know I'm blabbing along for a little bit here, but I'm an intraday trader. I do trade one session. I trade London session. I don't trade New York anymore. I like to sort of wake up, have my trading done, and sort of be done for the rest of the day. So I only trade London, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I do pick and choose my days. A lot of the time I don't trade all five days. I do like to have a day or a break where I'm not sort of trading, um, you know, but like I said, I only trade one session. You'll never catch me trading two sessions in a row. The only time I'll ever like creep into New York, for example, is if we have um, a position that I really don't want to miss. And I did miss it because I didn't set an alert, but there was a trade along on EU last week that was just structural alignment trade, which I should have been in. Um, even in the morning, I was going to plot a risk entry. Um, but like I said, I just cut off after 10 and let whatever else happens happen. But it was an absolutely incredible trade and it did run, but it's my fault um, and I missed it. So, um, yeah, so... I do trade intraday and this sort of higher time frame narrative that I'm going to build here on the weekly, etc., doesn't really affect our narrative and our bias for an intraday perspective. Okay, it's not really something um, that is going to affect us when we are taking intraday buy and sell positions because, you know, like I said, these to me the market is made up of swing structures, fractal swing structures from higher time frame to lower time frame, and these swing structures play out at different rates. Okay, so if you're looking at lower time frame swing structures, these are swing structures that, for example, if you're looking at the lowest time frames, can break every minute, can break every, you know, can break every couple of minutes. So then obviously, as we can see here. On this weekly time frame, we can see we have, for example, this larger swing structure here, have this lower low to a lower high to a lower low, an internal one here, we have this lower low, lower high, lower low. Now, this specific swing structure, if we're going to see the expectation of the swing structure play out, we understand that ooh, we understand that this can take a long time for this to play out. So, like I said, sort of a weekly bias and having weekly structures and stuff isn't something that is going to really uh, sort of affect my intraday bias, but because for me, I just like to understand the pair that I'm trading. Um, EU is a pair that I really, really, well, it's the only pair that I really trade. Sometimes if EU is a real mess, I'll jump onto GU. 
but you know it's not really going to affect it too much but i've still got the narrative there um for us to sort of have a look at anyway and i'm going to talk about it explain it just sort of what we can see here first of all because it's important because it's got some good stuff about sort of fractal swings and everything here as well right so like i said my narratives do start on the weekly just to start building that narrative okay and as we can see here first of all we can see from this um, level of swing stretches that we can see that we are bearish okay we have this larger bearish fractal swing as we can see we have this lower low so a lower high to a lower low and then from an internal perspective of this larger buy to sell range as we can see we have this buy to sell range from here to here from an internal perspective we have this most recent bearish swing stretch or leg which is this lower low to a lower high to a lower low so in the stand when we get a bearish uh, breaker structure we understand that we can potentially expect to see a pullback and as we can see here we've created two forms of protected highs we have these protected highs right here and this is our targeted swing low so the expectation of these swing stretches is to see a new lower high before bearish continuation if we are going to see the expectation of this swing stretcher fulfill itself. We're not going to start going on the monthlies and stuff and see if we can expect to see these highs go. Again, we just play to the intentions that we see and we never assume things. As we can see, this uh, buy to sell leg that we can see here, created by this range, has taken liquidity from both sides. We can see that we had this low was taken, this high was taken, which then led to the buy to sell that broke structure. So this created this new protected high and then this weak low. And this is our internal swing stretch or leg here. So if we're going to see the bearish continuation, the ideal scenario that we're going to see is for price now to potentially come up and mitigate into some form of supply within this swing stretch or leg, mitigate supply, and then see a reversal to come and see then our new lower low um, occur. So what we're looking for in this case is we're looking for some form of valid supply for price to potentially come and mitigate up in the ideal premium pricing of the swing structure to mitigate before we continue lower prices now i haven't drawn on all the supply levels okay what we can see here is again like right now i want to keep my charts as clean as i can so right now all these like supply levels that we've got up in here i haven't got them drawn on because for me they're not really relevant right now because like i said before um you know supply levels that we've got on the weekly which we're so far away we might not mitigate these for another year so it doesn't really matter as of right now I want to keep my charts clean but i still like to understand stack the confluences to what we can see because as we can see here right now we are mitigating some form of valid supply now we don't know if this supply level is going to hold right now we don't have any form of structural alignment or confirmation that we are going to see our new lower logo and we cannot get that structural alignment just yet because the internal structures of this larger bearish swing hasn't formed just yet. Okay, and I'll explain that in a minute. But right now, what we know and understand is that we're looking for some form of valid uh, mitigation to some form of valid supply to see a new lower high before bearish continuation. Now we can see, again, imbalance is something that I do like to use and it is something that I do think is quite important. And as we can see here, if we just start from the top of the swing here, we can see that we have this larger disrupted level here, which is what we can see here, which is basically where we take liquidity from both sides which has created this buy to sell range here okay so obviously as we can see here that this buy to sell range at the extreme with this build up of liquidity this daily imbalance etc would be a nice supply level for price to potentially mitigate to fulfill the move and the expectation to see um that new lower high before bearish continuation so if we were to see that the ideal place would be to see obviously this extreme appears to be the nicest we can see there's probably some form of interaction here but that's occurred here to see this okay but there are other levels as well we can see the daily imbalance here we've got some daily imbalance here and as we can see here we've got another disrupted level here which is taking liquidity on both sides which is more significant to this weekly time frame as we can see these ranges here taking liquidity on both sides it's a significant higher time frame poi compared to this for example here so these two levels here appear to be the levels of significance that stack the most amount of confluence as we can see here we've got two things going on first of all we can see that when we have a look at the eq or of the swing structure which we know premium and discount is going from the swing high to the swing low we can see that price as of right now has just missed the eq of the swing structure okay it hasn't mitigated the eq just yet and as we can see here we've also got the range eq which as of right now price has failed to mitigate now I'm not going to go into this too much in detail because this would be something that I'd have to explain on a whole nother video and it is in the quantum course um, for anyone who doesn't know. But what the range EQ is, is essentially when we have any sort of level of swing structure, um, when price is going to potentially fully classify that as mitigated and that swing structure as fully mitigated from a fractal perspective, this isn't using like breaks of structures on specific time frames like we map it, but we want to see the range EQ uh, mitigated and that is where price is likely to pull back to, to in a further sort of time frame. Um, 
which is essentially where price is going to pull back up to in a future date, mitigate some form of supply or demand level before it will continue and continue on its expectation. So even if price was to now start to continue to put in, it's like bearish structure here. So say price did break lower, it breaks higher, we get a new break of structure and create this liquidity here. This then is still valid to potentially see a mitigation into some form of valid supply up in the range EQ to then continue on with the bearish expectation here to then mitigate something and come and continue lower. So in an ideal situation, we want to see that range EQ mitigated as well, okay? So as we can see just from this perspective, and like I explained before, how fractal structures work, we cannot have structural alignment right now for price to come and take this low. Even if we get an order flow shift here bearish on the weekly, and we get this shift and we take this low, this is not structural alignment to come and take this low just yet. Because like I explained before, we haven't had a true significant structural low form within this swing structure. So there's two, two things that we can potentially expect to see from what we can expect and forecast on our intraday bias, or maybe not the intraday bias, but just what we can potentially expect to see. Now we're mitigating some form of valid supply here. And if we were to go down to the lower time frame here, we'd see that we have equal lows rest, sorry, equal highs resting just above this supply level. Now, yes, we've got imbalances here. We've got imbalances here. So we understand that from an ideal situation that the ideal supply levels that price could mitigate before price is going to continue on with its bearish expectation um, and put in on new lower high before bearish continuation, it's going to be some form of level within the premium that is above the range EQ. So something here or something here appear to be the most high probable. Um, you know, there is still levels here, but we can see the build up that's occurred here. And we have something here, but it's not really done much to the left, not really taken any formal liquidity. So these appear to be the two nicer levels if we're going to see that bearish continuation to occur from. But again, I'm not going to go into fractal structure too much, but when we have a look at this for a second, we can see that this is a swing low and price has given us this whole one push up. So we haven't created a new internal structural low from this specific swing structure to get any sort and form of structural alignment. So as we can see, yes, we are mitigating this supply level right now and we could get a shift in structure bearish here from an order flow perspective because the order flow is just the most recent range that we have. And um, again, which to me is just lower time frame swing structure. If we get a shift in structure here, this is not structural alignment, okay, to come and take this new low because this is our, in essence, the most recent fractal significant structural low. So we understand that in this case, price is valid to shift back bearish here now, come and test lower, shift structure, will create a new protected high, but price is still valid to potentially mitigate some form of demand, which we can see essentially here. This level here, this demand, we can see the imbalance that's occurred here. This demand level here is the most high probable thing that we can see for price to potentially mitigate, which is then valid to put in a new higher high here if we were to come and test up into these levels. So if this order flow range does shift back bearish, this is not true structural alignment to come and take this low just yet because this is all one push. If we have a look at this and jump to the monthly, it'll make more sense. When we break structure here and create this new protected high and a weak low, how if price is going to like if this low is going to hold here and we are going to see continuation back bullish and a deeper complex pullback up into supplies, what is price going to do? Well, price is going to come up, put a higher high, test lower, higher low, and then continuation. Okay, that is how internal structure has to fall. So then if we were then to create this new internal structural low here, we take this low, for example, and take this high and we create this new sort of protected low here if we were then to go ahead and take this low and get a pullback then we've had structural alignment and then this is the trade where we can accept potentially expect to see the expectation uh, of this um swing low right here to go but as of right now like i said we can't expect to see that low to go because we do not have structural alignment just yet okay but as I said before, we've got supply levels here, here, and here. But if we just focus on what we can see now, which is more important from an intraday perspective, um, we want to essentially follow and mostly for that intraday bias, the most recent weekly order flow range is sort of more so, so what I'm looking at, which we can see is right here. As we can see, we've broken structure here, okay, which has created this new low and this new high. So again, just from this perspective here, we can see that we have this like bullish swing structure here. We've taken this high, so this will be protected and this will be weak. So currently, just from this uh, swing structural expectation, we can expect to see one of two things, okay? We can potentially now expect to see that new higher low, potentially fill this weekly imbalance and then see a new higher high if it's going to come and test up into supplies here, here, etc. We don't know just yet if price is going to give us that reversal and come and test into demand here, fill this imbalance, etc. We don't know just yet. 
so all we can do is sort of understand the possibilities and play to the intentions that we see and we use lower time frames to help us understand this okay so as we can see here we've broken structure bullish we've put in a new higher high and we're mitigating some form of valid supply we can see the wick here this wick is completely unmitigated. So as we can see here that we know that this is some form of valid buy to sell on a lower time frame, and it is completely unmitigated. So this is valid to give us this reaction and we can see this nice sort of wick rejection that we're getting here on this most recent week that has just played out. We can see that wick rejection, which is showing now potential exhaustion to that top side and we could potentially start to see lower prices. Now, just from this breaker structure here, we know that we can potentially expect to see that pullback, okay? And we can obviously see here that we've got higher time frame sell to buy with the imbalance of if ideally if we were going to see any sort of bullish continuation, it would be for price to mitigate into here and then fulfill the move to come and take the liquidity above this higher high. We just need to be cautious and understand what we're mitigating to the left and understand both sides. Because right now we know that once we've had this breaker structure here on the weekly and we're starting to get this push up, we know already we're due a pullback on the higher time frame. We know that we are potentially expecting to see a new pullback like this before we see that bullish continuation to see that new higher time frame fractal swing structural low form before we then go ahead and put in a new higher high. Like I said before, we don't know when price wants to do something. So we understand in the back of our minds what price wants to do, but we play to current intentions. So are we invalid to see longs from here to continue bullish? Absolutely not. We just understand that we are mitigating some form of weekly supply here. We have this, etc. We don't know the point in which that's going to do. We can just stack the confluences to them levels and understand that ideally when we are in this situation here we don't want to continue buying here now from an intraday perspective because what have we done here right we've broken structure here this is protected this is weak this is now showing exhaustion we're mitigating higher time frame supply and we are severely in premium pricing so uh, from a when we go down lower time frames we need to be more cautious if we are looking to continue to take longs because we know just from this most recent order flow structure this to this looks to be more um, high probable mitigation into demand before then that bullish continuation but understanding that we could see the shift back bearish break a structure here and then either a from this situation here we could then see all the bearish string structures hold take the low and then potentially build some form of uh, liquidity like so to then sweep that liquidity here mitigate some form of supply and then continue lower and then create that new strong protected high here i've taken liquidity took the low took the high took the low sort of a similar situation that we got here okay and if that's going to occur from this uh, potential supply, we don't know. Okay, so we could either see this to then come and test higher. We can see this until we get that shift back bearish. And in that case, then obviously we are looking to sell when we see that weekly order flow shift um, from the higher time frame. And then A, like I said, depending if you're a swing stretcher, sorry, a sort of swing trader where you're holding um, higher time frame positions. Hence, I wanted to go over this um, either way, even though it doesn't really affect the intraday bias. If you're then looking to get involved in short positions here, um, you understand then that either A, price is valid to come and take this low, but we haven't got full structural alignment confirmation. And you need to be cautious of demand levels such as this, because even though on Forex.com, I can't go to the left and see what price is mitigating here, because and to be honest, what price has done 20 plus years ago isn't really too significant to us as of right now. But we understand that if we are getting involved in short positions here, we wouldn't want to be full TP targeting this low because we could still mitigate some form of valid demand. We can see we've got this imbalance and this sell to buy. Price can then mitigate this demand and then still see bullish continuation and mitigate higher probable supply levels that we've got here or anything else within the swing. So I've already broken down this order flow range which now if we go down to say the daily, we can see that swing structure more uh, relevant here. So as you can see here now, we've got this, again, this level of swing structure. We can start to see we have this high, 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 low, high, high. And as we can see here now, we are mitigating inside that supply level. But like I explained before, and I'm not sure what that low, that line's doing here, we can see the equal highs that are formed just above this. Okay, and as you can see, we have got this daily imbalance, but none of these ranges that we can see here really take liquidity. I mean, this one here, this buy to sell, had inducement resting just above it. As we took this low here, we have taken a liquidity point here and we did take liquidity above this high. So this buy to sell range has taken some form of liquidity, had inducement. As we can see here now, what is price doing? Price is starting to show exhaustion here. And as we can see, we're starting to see this um, by exhaustion. What I'm seeing is price is struggling to push higher. Okay, as you can see, price is starting to give what I call FTCs. 
which is essentially where we try and break a high and price fails to do so with conviction, okay? Because for a breaker stretcher, we want to see price break through for me with a candle body. Candle body break shows conviction, and then it gives significance to, in this case, the low, that broke structure, that this is strong, okay? If we start to see something like this, where we sort of get this, and then we get like a, a weak break such as this, an FTC, oh, that's not really great, I'll do it over here. If we start to sort of get these lows, and then we get this high, and we start to do this, and then we try to break the high here with no conviction, and then price breaks back bearish here now, then it's possible now that this is weak, and then... Uh, price is then going to continue to come and test lower okay so we're always looking for that conviction in price to show us that clear intent is that displacement right if you from an ict perspective displacement is where we see that aggressive push away okay and within my plan seeing a, sh a shift or a chock away um, with displacement is crucial to my plan um, it's none of this like flimsy sort of little chocks like this because they've got to see well i'm not going to go into my plan but displacements within price is important for me to show intent. Um, but yeah, as we see, we're mitigating that supply. Okay, and you can see here that again, when we understand swing structures, what can we see? Okay, this is the largest swing structure high, 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 low, high, high. Expectation would be to see a new high, low before bullish continuation. We can see the premium and discount. Okay, as you can see here. Uh, we've yet to mitigate into this level. Okay, here's the EQ. And as you can see here, here's the sell to buy um, range that was formed. You can see uh, here's the sell to buy uh, daily POI. And we can continue to refine things down here and see what we've got going on there. Okay, again, this would be the ideal place we'd like to see price mitigate before bullish continuation. But from that intraday perspective, okay, again, this is what's the most important thing that we see. And as I explained before, everything that's going on in this weekly time frame, you know, this doesn't really matter too much for our intraday perspective. It's just good to know and understand for me. It, it might be the polar opposite for other people, right? Some people might like really short, sweet, concise, like one hour and below and just have it very simple. But I'm a very detailed technical trader. I like to just know what I'm doing. I like to understand. I really like to understand what's going on. Um, and that's why I sort of like to know what's going on. Doesn't make, it doesn't confuse me with my bias anyway from an intraday perspective. Um, it's just sort of good to know for me anyway. But it might be different for you guys. So um, just delete that one quickly. And um, we get back to the H4. Okay. No, we don't. We get back to the daily quickly. And as you can see here now, this is obviously playing the bullish impulsive phase of this larger swing structure. So we can see that this was a push. Then we sort of create this new order flow level here. Okay. So as of right now, this is playing the bullish impulsive phase of this larger swing structure. So if we're going to see another impulsive push and potentially come and take these equal highs here, then we aren't invalid to see now a new higher low before bullish continuation and to potentially see a reaction up into maybe this level here, right? And this is this whole buy to sell range um, we, is a whole valid supply level. And we could see a reaction into this level, which could then be the catalyst to then give us a deeper pullback, either A, to then come and take the liquidity that'll be formed here, mitigate demand and give bullish continuation, or to sweep the liquidity, come and test lower, and then potentially take this low to then come and either mitigate some form of demand and we could obviously refine these down here and mitigate them demand levels here and then see the bullish continuation to then come and test into the um other supply levels that we've got like here and here etc or it could just then give us that reaction and take the low if that level was to hold but like we've explained before the more high probable levels would be for that so when i'm looking at this and forecasting this from my intraday perspective i'll put that one back i've lost that one um, so if I was now forecasting this for my forecast for Cohen into next week for trading this from an intraday perspective now, we can start to see that exhaustion. We are mitigating valid supply and we do have supply for both, okay, which we price could mitigate. So I am understanding why price is valid to mitigate demand and put a new high high. I can just see that exhaustion that's occurring here. And we know now after a break of structure here, we could see that pullback, okay, to come and potentially mitigate into demand to then give us that bullish continuation. Or if it wanted to give us the deeper pullback, it could take this low. But we do understand that, again, when we have a look at it from, again, the daily order flow level, we can see we have this high, 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 low, high, high. We could then mitigate some form of demand to then see that bullish continuation, which we'll see now is what we can see on the H4. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the right piece of structure here. So as we can see here, it's the same thing as before. We can see that we have our protected low here. And this is our weak targeted high. Okay, this is all one push. This is our whole swing structure. There's two things that we can expect to potentially see here, right? 
we can then potentially now see the new higher low before bullish continuation, which I explained before. And on the H4, we can see that we have, this is the sell to buy candle that caused the breaker structure. We can see the four hour imbalances that have been filled. Okay. And we did see that one push away here. We are again, failing to take the high here. We've FTC'd above this high. So there's two things that again can occur. We can either now potentially see a further, uh, further deeper mitigation into supply, uh, sorry, demand to mitigate something either here or is, is an invalid to mitigate the extreme to then see bullish continuation to come and take the high. If we're going to see that bullish continuation, just understanding what's going on to the left, what we're mitigating, what we have mitigated and sort of where we are priced within the higher time frame and lower time frame swing structures. Just understanding now that we can see here that price could then break structure here, for example, test lower understanding both sides of the swings because if this low breaks here now mitigates into here because of this ftc's and exhaustions that we're seeing and this mitigation once we shift this low here okay once we break this low here um we just go ahead and draw a line here when we take that low we then create a new internal structure which then we could see a new lower high before bearish continuation which could then um if we just go ahead and draw this out here this is where it gets a little bit complex and I don't want to go into it too much because if you don't have a good understanding of fractal structure, it might go over your head a little bit. Once we take this low here now, we create this new larger buy to sell range contained within this internal swing structure here, this sell to buy. So this is all sort of complex structure essentially. And we could then see continue bearish continuation to then come and take this low um, to then come and take obviously confirm then the larger complex pullback to come and test lower. So coming into now Monday, just to reiterate again, we'll be seeing sort of how price is coming down and reacting to levels down into here. Okay. Uh, coming to react to demand levels here for potential bullish continuation. We do also have demand levels here. Just understanding how this internal structure is forming, understanding what we've mitigated to the left, where we're priced and the exhaustion that we're starting to see here. Um, and then sort of, we'd have to see how the market opens, but then looking to see if we get this. Um, so we could see if price ranged here on market open and we open somewhere here could we be looking for shorts to come down into here for then longs to either a take the high i wouldn't be targeting this high because we wouldn't have full alignment for this and we understand that why price is valid to come in test lower down if we broke this structural low here and it got involved in a long we'd be needing to partial um up into levels of supply that we would see formed because we understand that what we'd be valid to see is price to mitigate some form of supply because if i go ahead and draw on the range that be formed which would be here we'd see this larger supply range uh, be formed here we understand that from this buy to sell range here if we broke structure here and i'll just go ahead and draw a h1 break here if we were to break that low now this would create this protected high and a weak low when we, once we take this low here so then if we mitigate this level here unless you truly believe the expectation of the structure it's going to take the high i wouldn't be targeting this as my first target i would then be in this position here and i'd be setting partial targets depending how you trade either here and then at structural liquidity points up along the way um as partial points because we understand that price is now valid to see following that protected high and, and then when we break structure here create a new weak low price is then valid to mitigate some form of supply to react to to then come and test lower so that's why i wouldn't be targeting this high to go and go here okay so that's pretty much it um that's all we're going to be really going over like i said it's been going on nearly half an hour here just on uh, a breakdown on eu and just explaining things so um like i said before if you guys have got any questions feel free to pop them in the comments um if you guys have got any questions again hit me up on instagram or something um or if you've got me on discord find me over on discord any video content ideas you want to see, again, pop them in the comments. And please like the video, subscribe. I've never said that before. Uh, if you enjoyed it, any sort of feedback and comments, um, do let me know as well. Um, I know I'm going to get some people asking about the TDI. And that is something that I will break down in another video. Um, but until next time, guys, love out and peace.